Elon Musk may be the most influential person in America, not just the richest, but the most powerful. A new book is out today called Character Limit, How Elon Musk Destroyed Twitter. And the timing is certainly good for the authors because this week Musk is back in the news in hot water again over something he posted to his platform. This one, after a second would-be assassin targeted Donald Trump this past weekend, Musk posted and later deleted what he says was a bad joke. After a user asked why they wanted to kill Donald Trump, Musk shared it and wrote, and no one is even trying to assassinate Biden Kamala with a thinking emoji at the end. He later said it was taken out of context. Musk has posted phony news articles and retweeted controversial content. Just since the start of August, he's had to delete at least three viral tweets completely from his timeline. As the authors of the new book put it, he's gambled his reputation and billions of dollars on the haphazard acquisition of his favorite toy. Join us now, the authors of Character Limit, How Elon Musk Destroyed Twitter, Ryan Mack and Kate Conger. Thank you both for coming on. Appreciate it. Kate, let me start with you. Why do you think he bought it? I think he was really interested in Twitter as a user. He really enjoyed being on the platform. And he wanted to influence the content moderation decisions that were being made there. So as he became more and more invested in the platform as a user, he just wanted to take control of it for himself. But Ryan, does he care that it's lost billions in value? Hopefully he cares. I mean, again, this is someone worth more than $250 billion. Right. Um, you, you know, a, a hit like that isn't going to affect him as much as it would you or me. Uh, for example, well, it would it would affect me quite a bit if I had those billions, <laughs> but but I don't. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But it's it's not a good thing that, you know, that his interests, his, his time is being taken away by Twitter. I mean, he's paying, for example, more than a billion dollars a year in interest payments alone to, to supplement this company and the loss of revenue. I mean, those are hits for anyone. So it's kind of a, a mess for him right now. Um, you, you basically said that, and this is from your book, that it's number six. Twitter's had a massive drop in revenue due to activist groups pressuring advertisers, even though nothing has changed with content moderation, and we did everything we could to appease the activists. This is, this, sorry, this is from Elon Musk. Extremely messed up. They're trying to destroy free speech in America. He's been going after, Kate, the advertisers now. I, I can't believe that that's a particularly effective uh, way to get the advertisers to change uh, what they're doing, but maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll get scared. Yeah, and Musk has really famously eschewed advertising in the past. He's never advertised for Tesla, and it's not an industry that he particularly enjoys or relates to. And so coming into Twitter and having to run an advertising business is a bit foreign to him. And he's really alienated advertisers with some of his recent attacks, telling them not to spend on the platform, and then suing really influential advertising industry groups that help advertisers organize. Um, and this is one of the uh, the fake videos that he shared. This is a fake video of Kamala Harris that Musk retweeted. This is number eight. This is not real, but he did send it out. Let's watch. I, Kamala Harris, and your Democrat candidate for president, because Joe Biden finally exposed his senility of the debate. Thanks, Joe. I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. So if you criticize anything I say, you're both sexist and racist. I may not know the first thing about running the country, but remember, that's a good thing if you're a deep state puppet. Now, was this sent out as a joke? I mean, you know, you can say it's funny, right, if you take it as a joke. Right. But was it sent out as as a joke, Ryan? And I guess that's my question is it seems that he's sending a lot of things out, letting them sit for a bit. Right. And then saying, oh, you know, I'm going to delete that. I guess I shouldn't have I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I think he, he would argue it's a joke. I mean, there the, the thing is, there is a rule that currently exists at X against manipulated media. You know, if, if any other user were to post that video, they could be hit with a violation of, of X's rules. It's pretty clear that there's a different set of rules that apply to the owner of the platform, someone that has you know, nearly 200 million followers. And he simply doesn't care. He, he has done this multiple times. And, you know, everything seems to be a joke to him. But I, and I think that's the point, Kate, is that it seems he did kind of buy this as a, as a toy. He's got enough money. 
that if he loses, I don't know, 10, 20 billion on Twitter, that that's okay from with him. He wants to be part of the conversation in his particular way. Yeah, he said about the acquisition that he does not view it as a moneymaker. It's something that is more ideological for him. But he really loves the platform. And, you know, you see it in the way he almost thinks in Twitter memes. For instance, when he acquired the company and walked in with a sink, he's referencing a tweet that a lot of people post with serious news and then say, let that sink in. So you see how he's always referencing memes from Twitter in his real life, and he's really enmeshed and embedded with the platform. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.